All right, hello everybody. Welcome back, Carl again. All right, um, so I'm going to start this video off with kind of like an introduction and then an overview of what I actually did here, and then the rest of the video will be the install. Now it's a pretty long video, and it took about a week and a half or so to get this going. So what I have here is a Lionel uh, traditionally controlled um, engine for neutral reverse on the transformer. And I actually bought a Cruise Commander Lite um, install board and have put it in this engine. So um, well that's what the rest of the video will be about. However, I had some problems over the way, and I just want to, because the video kind of goes back and forth, I want to really talk about what I ended up actually doing, and then you can watch the video if you choose to um, really understand how it works, uh, how the install goes, or um, if you just want to know. It's really not that hard to do. So uh, there's four screws underneath here. I already pulled them out. So we'll pull this off the shell. And um, let's start there. So the first thing I did was I installed LEDs in each one of these holders. Now the kit comes with um, bypass capacitors, 0.01 UF. And I actually have them tucked in the shell there. So let's see if you can see that. You see there's a little blue. This one has yellow. And there's a little blue one on the back. They're tucked in with it. And then on the cruise light board, I actually have um, the common going to common here. Um, I have 0.1 UF capacitors across the outputs here as well. I found that I needed both of those capacitors to reduce the flickering effect. So I have 0.1 UF across the output and then the ground here. And then I have 820 ohm resistors maybe. Let me just double check those resistor values. Okay, yeah, so I have 820 ohm resistors um, connected on the output here through the hot lead going to the LEDs. So two bypass capacitors in the resistors. And these are half watt 120 ohm. 820 ohm resistors. Um, also have the program run switch and then this black wire is the antenna. Now I was able to mount this board and the factory spot I just used a screw to kind of snug it along there. Um, I have PTCs connected with um, the hot lead coming in and then to each one of the motor leads going out. Now um, the keen observer will note I actually ruined my factory horn board here actually blew it up so I made my own I reverse engineered the uh, board and etched my own and I'll put those design files down below in case you're uh, interested in those and I got it fixed um, on the website it talks about on this board you need to attach a wire right here um, which actually goes to the base of this transistor here and what that does is when it sees a high, it'll actually activate the horn. Now, it took me literally a week to try to figure it out. I actually broke two boards. I etched, this is my first one I etched, broke that board, and then this is the original one. Um, I did have problems with um, kind of locating components that made it sound good. So I ended up using a different transistor here on the output stage. It's really hard to see underneath all those wires. And that's actually a TIP41 transistor. Uh, let's see. The other thing I had to do was um, on the cruise light board, okay, on the cruise light board, it says to use pin 3. So you have power, common, this one is empty, and then serial data. You actually have to connect it to the empty one. And the way I did mine was I actually just pulled the purple wire or the serial data out of the connector and stuck it in that one. So that's what I'm using, the purple. And then it runs to um, this circuit, which I made. And here is a schematic view of it. So what happens is uh, that pin 3 that I showed you comes through a 1K resistor. And then that goes out to that horn wire that I showed you where to attach here. So that, through that 1K resistor, goes to this point here. Then a 10K resistor goes from there to ground. 
and that basically stops it from beeping. Without this circuit, when you went in reverse, for some reason it would kind of make these little clicking noises. And I found that the 10K resistor would help pull that down, and I added the 1K, and that stopped the clicking. So that was my solution for this board. And you can see here, here is that circuit. I have the uh, 1K, the 10K, and the wires going out. And it just runs through this this pigtail here and runs over to this board. And so that's it. That actually works. Now, unfortunately, I don't think that my horn board sounds exactly like the factory one did. So um, if you're interested in doing that, you might just want to go ahead and pick up the rail, rail sounds board now and get it over with. So again, this is kind of like the prerequisite to the video. Um, you know, watch as much as the video you want. It's uh, it's about an hour long. I'm still trying to edit some of that down. So that's why I figured I'd come down and make this quick video just to kind of show you the overall what I ended up actually doing. Uh, you'll see in the video I've done a lot of different things, a lot of different circuits. Um, I actually got a whistle tender to work with that board and I needed this pretty complex circuits with two transistors and then some diodes. So I'll show you that in another actual video. So anyhow, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so real quick before I do the uh, uh, take you to the video of the install, I just want to show you the train real quick here and what it looks like. All right, so turn the track power on. You see I've tried power now. And let me turn some of these other lights off so you can kind of get a look at how the LEDs actually look in there. Really kind of cool. And they're actually on directional, so when it's going to go forward, the front light comes on, and when it goes back, the back light comes on. And I'll show you that. Okay, so let's pull you back out here. I'll go ahead and address the motor here. And there's no any kind of sounds or anything except for that horn board, remember. So we'll address the engine, and we can start it here. It's got really fine control. Not bad. All right, so we'll stop it. Now, move you here. And we'll get a shot of the rear lights coming on for it going backwards. It goes backwards. Now, the when I go backwards, the front cab light there flickers for whatever reason. So there's actually two lights in the front, and in reverse, for some reason, let me just move it forward here, and we'll go backwards. The light will flicker just a little bit. Now, I can turn that off, and that might be a feature code that I need to program in right, and I just haven't looked at that option, but you can turn that light off. So if we address the engine, I can actually turn that light off there. So there you have it. And let me just bring you back here. And you can see what is actually the front light. And then I'll turn that cab light on. And then off. So anyhow, you move it forward. And then we'll bring it backwards. And you can see that no flickering happens there. So the last part, I want to show you the horn. So there's the horn. And that actually is my fixed horn board and using the remote horn button here you can actually run the train and I'll beep the horn and you'll see there's no flickering of the lights when I hit the horn and then we'll bring it reverse horn again there it is okay all right, well, guys, enjoy the rest of the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and put them down below, and I'll try to remember to link everything in down below as well. All right, hello, everybody. Welcome back. Carl again. Today, I'm going to talk about a, a new project I'll be working on. I have a Lionel uh, transformer controlled for neutral reverse. has an electric horn here in a, with a speaker, and I have something exciting. I have the Cruise Commander Light module which is basically the legacy from Electric Railroad Company. 
Comes with the 4R LC board, which is the receiver part. Here's the driver board, miscellaneous hardware. So I'm gonna be converting this train from traditional operation or transformer controlled to TMCC or command control. I just threw this together real quick. This is just a uh, engine holder I'm gonna use, just a piece of plywood. It has a two uh, one by three rails. Let's see, it is, the piece of plywood's about six inches on the bottom here, and then you have two half inch pieces. So I have about five inches uh, inside diameter there. And then this, I have a, a towel that I'm going to stick in here. And as you can see, when you flip this over and tuck this down, it actually makes a perfect engine cradle. Okay, so I'm set up for removal of the diesel engine. Um, I have my instruction manual over here. So I have this sheet I printed off from the manual. Talks about all the different locations on the cruise light board. And then over here, I'm going to just write down what the factory wires do in case I ever want to put it back to original. I'm already removed the screws. Uh, there's four screws that hold the shell on. So I'll just flip this over and pull the shell off. Uh, that comes off. And there is some light bulbs in here. Now, I haven't decided if I am going to replace these with like a uh, LED. Haven't quite decided yet. So these are the factory bulbs they kind of look like christmas lights almost uh, i'm not sure what these are rated at but i'm almost certain they were not rated for 18 volts continuous so i think what i might end up doing is go ahead and replacing these with some leds okay so it's been a couple minutes um, i used my uh, multimeter here on the continuity mode or buzzer where when you touch the two probes together they will uh, beep as you heard and I spent just a couple minutes. Uh, the way mine was assembled, I had uh, wire nuts on the wires, and then they are actually soldered together as well. So I cut them one by one. This is the original E unit. It has a blue and a white. Now this blue and white went to um, the direction switch for uh, forward and reverse. And then you have brown and gray. This was your power. The gray was the AC ground, and, and the uh, brown was the AC hot. And then the red and black went to the two motors. Now, interestingly enough, the red wire went to, to, the rear, uh, to the red wire of the rear motor, and then the black wire of the front motor. So the black wire went to the red front motor, and then the black of the rear. Uh, so it was, it was kind of backwards. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's how they did it. And what I did was I just made a little sheet over here, and um, I can post the link to this sheet so you can see the wire colors in case you're in need of that information. But I'm sure they're all going to be a little different. So I'll set the E unit to the side. Uh, this is the soundboard. There's these two pins here which connect to the speaker. You have these red and black, which is um, the red went to the horn switch which is on the speaker box here, and then the black went to ground. And that was the only wires on here. Now, in the cruise light manual from Lionel or Electric Railroad Company, it doesn't talk about using the TMCC to operate the original horn. However, I did find in one of the other manuals a link to uh, the horn control. I think this was the ACDC Commander. And it talks about using the rail sound connector here, that pin 3 to this board and as you can see this board is almost identical it has a, a 4069 ube chip on here and it talks about attaching a wire attach a wire right on that resistor to actually get uh your power so um i have this one here's the back of that board and as you can see my board is identical to that, so I can attach a wire here, and that'll go to that third pin, and that should give me my horn control. So hopefully you have a soldering station to do that. If not, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. Uh, the other option you have, if you don't want to use the original horn, is to get the rail sounds. And at some point, I might do that. I might buy the rail sounds. Um, I have this nice speaker location, so I can put the included speaker in here and then actually use uh, rail sounds for this. And the boards are pretty small now, so I might actually do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to 
Um, probably disconnect this horn button, this on off horn. I don't really see the need to have it. I'm, it's going to be on remote control now. So I'll just tuck these wires in my housing here and just disregard them. What I am going to do is I need a program one switch for the um, cruise light. So I'm going to use this direction control and not actually have to cut any holes into it. So that's going to be really convenient. And then if I ever want to put it back to original operation with the standard E unit, I haven't added any holes. So to get the speaker off, there was actually two screws here and then one in the front. I did have to pop this E unit out of this board. It sat in this board here, had two screws in the back, and then the one was down here in the front. And then the speaker just fell right off. Don't mess with these screws. That's what hold the switches in. Now, in the manual for or not the manual, but on their Electric Railroad website, they talk about the size of this E-unit. It's just a little bit wider than the standard line-out E-unit. So if I go to that board, actually my unit, my E-unit is a little wider than that uh, Electric Railroad board. So I'm hoping I can stick this a, this new cruise light module right in this original holder and not have to worry about it. There is no mounting holes in this board. The kit does come with double-sided foam tape. I'd rather not use that. It's really gooey. And at some point, that's going to fail, and then the board's going to be slapping around in there. So I'm hoping I can just slide this right in this spot where the original unit was and keep it somewhat original there. So we'll see how that goes. So these wires here are for uh, the motor. The red and black go to the motor, and the red and yellow go to the third rail pickup. This little guy here, and then the ground. So for me, I actually have, let me see if I can find my colors. Um, and I don't remember what colors they are, so what I'm going to do is just, I'll have to get back on my sheet and figure that out. I'm certain that the red, excuse me, I'm certain the yellow, yeah, I don't recall. Let's just strip one and figure it out. So I'll just strip the yellow one and then I might as well just strip this blue one. And we'll take my continuity meter here and figure out which is which. So yellow is going to the ground or the wheels and blue has to go to this roller in the middle yep there it is so the blue wire is this third rail pickup or the AC hot and the yellow is the ground so let's just make that note okay so now I got that figured out all right so now I guess my next task is gonna be to figure out how I'm gonna mount the cruise light in and try to button it back together utilizing these factory switches. I think what I'll do is also I'll stick this back on now and screw it back together. At this point I'm finished with it. And that way I have the wires coming up for the speaker and then for the direction switch. Uh, now one thing to note I didn't look at the polarity of the speaker because the, the pins are kind of common. I just picked one and marked it with some black marker. And then the, on the horn board, I just marked that upper one right here. So if you're looking at this board this way, this upper one I marked black. And the black actually goes to positive. So if you're looking at the board, this is positive, this is negative. Another note, some of the directions talk about adding bypass capacitors across the motor leagues, legs. Now, this particular uh, engine has little DC motors down here. And if you remember earlier in the video, I talked about why I, uh, from the E unit, was the red for one and the black for the other. That's because the motors are actually mounted backwards. So I don't know if you can see, you have this motor facing this way and this motor facing this way. So when this motor goes forward, then this one has to go in reverse and then vice versa. So that's why the wires were reversed. So make sure if you're using this, uh, this engine or the, excuse me, this cruise light board that you pay attention to that. Because as you can see, 
and the directions, there's only a spot for motor, motor, AC common, and AC power. And it talks about in the direction manual that you have to just link these two together for these two motors. So you're going to have to reverse them like you did before. Or you'll have to reverse them like they were originally with the red from this motor to the black of this motor and the black of this motor with the red of that motor and there. And then once you get it all wired, you set it on a test track and you actually turn it on and see if it goes forward or, re or reverse. And if it goes reverse, then you need to flip those wires. You need to flip these motor wires, this one for this one and this one for that one. That way it'll start out in the forward motion. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and start the procedure of tinning these wires. Let's open my bag here. You also get in the kit uh, little tiny um, capacitors, these little 0.1 microfarads, and it says you need those if you're using LEDs. And that's just to stop the flicker. Also comes with a program one switch, which I'm not going to be using, and then an antenna wire. Uh, now one thing I don't like about the cruise light is you, know, you have these terminal blocks here for all your accessories, but these are how you're supposed to connect to the motor wires using these heavy heavy legs. I wish they would have just put a little four-way connector block and you could have just screwed them in. Uh, nevertheless, even if they did that, they probably wouldn't have been long enough, so I would have had to splice wire in anyhow. So I think what I'm going to do for this is I'll mount it, and what I'll do is I'll cut this wire to go to the front motors, and then I'll strip it in the middle, and I'll have that go to the back. Now, I was reading on some forums, on the O-Gage forums from a gentleman, uh, I believe his name was Gun Runner John, and I'll post the link down below to that forum, and he talked about using, uh, these are PTCs or polythermal fuses, polythermal cutout I think is what PTC stands for, and he recommended getting the Borns MF-R065, and it has a 65 uh, milliamp uh, hold current and a 1.3 amp trip. And he said to use one between each motor and then one between the third rail or the, the collector roller and the whole package. And that will basically protect this board so that if it derails or gets hung up, it doesn't actually blow these FETs up. You know, these are pretty small and they're, they're not as uh, heavy duty as the AC or DC commander for big, big motors. So these are really meant for small DC motors. Now, originally when I got this train set, it came with an 18 volt 3 amp power pack. So the, uh, between this train and all the accessories, there's only ever made to pull at the most 3 amps. So what I'm going to do is, just out of curiosity, um, I hooked both motors up here, and I have it connected to my DC power supply. Now, uh, unfortunately, I don't have an AC power supply with a meter, so I'm not sure how much current I'll be pulling AC, but as far as DC goes, that'll at least give me a kind of a basic understanding of where I'm at. So let's move you over. So here is my setup. I got the red and black wires from the motors connected to positive, red and black motors from the motors. And that's going over to my power supply here. So let's turn this on. I have a current regulated at one half at an amp and the voltage is at zero. So I'll plug this in and as you would expect, nothing happens. So let's just crank up the voltage a little bit here and see what happens when we bring the voltage up. So I cranked the current up a little bit because I hit a half an amp, seven volts. Both motors are running. I guess we'll, we'll go to 12 and at 0.55 amps. And uh, there you can see the motor on that one and the motor on that one running. So I'll just put my hand on the wheel and kind of create a little drag on both motors. And see what happens. We turn it up a little bit more. Okay, so you see, I'm I'm dragging it pretty good. I'm at just about an amp for both motors. Let's turn this off. Gun Runner John recommends using these um, fuses. So at 1.3 amp, it'll trip and it'll hold until it gets below 0.65 amp. So I feel that 1.3 amp is more than enough. So I'm going to put one between each motor and then one between the um, third rail or the hot AC hot. For the AC 
or DC Commander, he recommends using these, which is the Bourne's MF R160. And that has a 3.2 amp trip and a 1.6 amp hold. Now, according to, to the directions um, on the website for the uh, cruise light, and I don't think that it says in here, but it says that, oh yeah, it does. So single or dual DC motor capable, five amps peak. So to me, the most you ever want to pull is five amps. So I'm gonna try the 1.3 amp fuses. Okay, so I made a little bit of a boo-boo. Um, earlier I told you I tin these wires. Don't do that. Uh, that makes it really hard to twist together. So what I'm gonna do is, well, on this harness here, this four pin harness, the black is the AC common, which remember is these yellows. So what I'm gonna do is attach a um, the yellows together, the black, bring the E unit black over, which also goes to ground, excuse me, not the E unit, the uh, speaker, and then I'm gonna put a little jumper just in case I need another ground, because I do have those lights I still need to attach. So I think that's what I'll end up using that for is to attach the lights to it. And then that way I can uh, twist these all together now that they're not um, tinned, and then I'll be able to put a little solder on there to keep them together and then a wire nut. So, fortunately, I messed up, so you can learn from my mistake. I thought the best thing to do was tin those wires, and I was wrong. So, Now, it may not be totally necessary for you to attach both grounds to the cruise light board, but just because that's how it was wired, that's how I'm going to wire this one. And then I'll use the little jumper. I'll just put a little solder on this. I'll just trim the end and there you have it one ground now this these wire nuts look like they might be a little too small to reuse on there let's see no nope, they fit on there just fine so there's all my grounds together I'll set them to the side So next we'll do this red, which is the AC hot. So that's where I'm gonna put my small PT uh, C fuse in line here. Oh, the other thing I'm gonna do is they sent some heat shrink tubing with the uh, unit kind of small to go over my PTC so I have a little bit bigger one I'll just put a little piece of that on there Alright, so there's that. And 
I'm going to just slide the heat shrink up once I get the other one done. And I'm just going to use this other end of the wire for this side. Shrink them now. All right, so. There is that. I th think I'm just going to put one more piece over top of that. This is a little extra protection so that those don't short out. Just slide that extra piece of heat shrink over and put a little zip tie on it just to kind of hold it in place. I'm kind of hoping at some point that the uh, electric railroad company just adds this fuse. I mean, they could add a, I know there's not much room, but maybe they could stick in a PTC uh, right here on this side of the board, just a small little surface mount one, or maybe even underneath here. That'd be really convenient. That would save us from having to do that. All right, so there's the PTC infused. And for those who don't know, a PTC, when it trips, once it cools back down and you remove the overcurrent, it'll actually um, reset itself. So that's kind of the advantage of using a PTC as opposed to a regular fuse. Because then with the regular fuse, you'd have to actually go in there and reset it or replace the fuse. But with the PTCs, you don't. So remember, the blue wire is my third rail pickup on both of these. So we'll bring those together. And I'm just going to, because I pre-tend these, I'm going to cut the pre-tended off and re-strip them so that I can twist them together fairly easy. This red wire is the hot, so that's going to go with this blue. Now, just as I did with the black, I'm going to add a little red jumper wire here. For like my lights and if I need it for something else. I'll just get a little bit of that wire here. Put that there. Alright, so I know my these little wire knots that came with it originally are going to be too small. So I have some other ones, and let's see if this one will fit. And it's a tight fit, but it looks like it's going to fit here. Uh, next, what we're going to do is I'm going to attach the black and red of the motors, the front and back, to the one of these uh, motor wires here and then do the same thing. Now I am not going to solder these yet because I want to put it on the track and test and before I go through the process of soldering I'll make sure that I get it in the right direction. Alright, so what I'll do is I have the yellow wire from the cruise commander board going to the red of the rear and the black of the front. Then I'm going to take the blue wire and what I did was I stripped the end of the wire and then I went in the middle and I stripped a little bit so that I can put the black wire here like this for example. So you can pull yourself uh, some insulation away and then you can just wrap this wire right around it. And then once we know it's good, we'll just take a little solder and just touch that up. And then we'll just put a little piece of tape around it and we'll be good to go. The, the other thing is don't cut yourself short on the wire. Um, I cut just a very little bit off of those wires and I'm having a lot of trouble now trying to make these fit. I made them a little too loose. I should have left the wires the original length and then that way um, I would have had some more play so okay so just about done here I think what I'm gonna do I was looking at my shell 
And I actually have three lights, a front light, like a window light, and then a rear light uh, down this end. So I think what I'm gonna do is on this unit, um, you can see I don't have a chuff in, so I won't use that. I have common, which on here I marked with black marker, the two commons, just so I knew. I think I'm gonna use the feature light for, or the feature screw for this front light here, which is like a cab light. And I can make that strobe or I can make it just come on and off. And then I'm gonna use the screw terminal here for front light for the front and the rear for the light. So that way I'll have directional light in. And this is the common for that. So I think what I'll do is once I get everything else together and I get the motor squared away, I'll go ahead and separate these wires and actually run them to that this terminal block here. So the only thing I have really to make is the program run switch, which goes to common and then the program run. And it doesn't make a difference which one goes where. Um, I'm going to use the blue one will go to this hole. You have to use a pretty small screwdriver and make sure you unscrew them all the way because of the way the uh, terminals work. They actually come down and then when you close them, the little metal plate comes back up. I'm just going to trim this. It's a little long. So make sure before you get started that you unscrew all of them all the way. I'm going to screw down this chuff switch because I'm not using that. And then we'll have the common. Okay, so it's been a couple days since the I started this project. And uh, the reason why is I, I cannot get the horn to work. So I've been really fussing with that. And in fact, I took the horn board, which is right here, this board off, and I've been trying to get it to work with the regular transformer, and I can't. So I've played with some of these components, and I'm pretty sure this chip is bad, which is a 4069 chip. Um, and I even uh, did a schematic of how it works try to figure out what's going on there and I can't get it to work so I'm pretty sure this chip is bad and of course I don't have any 4069 chips in all my uh, stock so I'm gonna have to order one so anyhow we'll put that off to another time I did open up my tender which has a air whistle and it just has a little DC motor here and this real small circuit board and if you remember from the ACDC Commander website, it actually talks about using the electronic whistle. So here is the board and it says that you attach a wire right there. So if you bring this in the shot, I'm going to grab a little pointer, it is actually this resistor right there. So see if I can get that to focus. And when I tried to attach a wire, I actually broke it. And that's just a, a 10K resistor on my board. Now, on this board, it looks like it's 4.7K. Not that it makes a difference, whatever you have. So I just replaced it with another resistor, and I actually put a little, like, loop in there. Now, if I attach the... If you remember, I used this harness, and I attached a wire to this black one, because that was pen 3 according to this. Nothing happens. And in fact, when I hook all this together and I make it work, I can get the train to run with TMCC, and this red and black are simply power and ground. So that can't be right. So just on a chance, I plug this in and I stuck a wire into that third unopened spot in between the purple and the black, and that was it. So I don't know why Electric Railroad Company doesn't put a wire there, but if you put something there, it actually, when you push the whistle button, it gives you a high. So that's what I want. So here is my other electric rail board. Now, I really don't want to solder onto this board because these traces are very thought fine. I would rather try to find a way of just sticking like a pin or something down into this connector and just using it that way. Maybe put a little dab of glue in there to hold it. And again, I don't want to damage this connector because I might end up getting the rail sounds. So I think that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to work on that. So we'll put the tender to the side. Um, the tender will be for the next video when I put this 
conversion board into that steam engine. So we'll just set this to the side. So how I ended up actually holding this on was I drilled a little tiny hole right here and just put a screw so that it actually fits down into there's a little um, a groove down in here and it actually fits down in there and then screws in and that way everything is intact for if I ever want to go back to the way it was. Now if you do remember I also um, connected the wires the original way I did it didn't work so I had to reverse them so the red from the back black back motor goes to the blue and the black from the front motor the black from the front motor there goes to this blue as well so that is the forward direction for me and then the black of the back goes to the yellow and the red of the front goes to the yellow now I also put these fuses in these thermal cutout fuses so the back motor has it on the yellow and the front motor has it on the blue so I have three for thermal fuses one is the input here coming from the third rail or roller so that's coming into this board and again remember that trips at let me look at my sheet that trips at 1.3 amps and then holds off until it gets below 650 milliamps and that's the same with this one and this one so my goal is not to blow this motor up now this says it can run at i, I thought it was five amps i can't remember now uh five amps peak so I'm guessing they wanted to run at about two and a half, three normally, and then it can handle up to five. So nevertheless, we'll see how that, how that actually works for me. Um, I do have the switch installed, if you remember. Uh, my speaker is not connected. This goes to the board, uh, which I disconnected. And then also I have red and black that I can tie back into the board. So uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to call this just about complete. I'm going to work on the lights today for the cab that's going to tie into these lights. And that's going to be it. I'm going to put this back in. Uh, I do not have electric couplers, so I'm not, not going to be using those. And that's going to be it. I'll put the lights in, and we'll have to do another follow-up video for the horn board repair and see how I end up with that. So I order a chip, and hopefully next week it'll come in. I'm also going to order some of these. I bring my schematic in. There is uh, these two transistors here, which turn the speaker on, and then a transistor here. I'm going to order those just in case, so I have them as well. And um, I actually laid this board out on Eagle CAD, so uh, if I remember, I'll put that in the video below as well, or in the follow-up video for my train horn repair. And that way, if somebody needs to see how it works, they have that information. All right, so let's move this out of the way. We'll bring the uh, cab light in. And I think, I've been thinking about how I'm gonna do this, and I think I'm just gonna pull these out. At this point, I'm just going to leave these light bulbs in. Uh, we'll see how they last, and we can make a determine from there. Determination from there. I, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I mean, I could always put the LEDs in, but at this point, I'll just leave these there. So what I actually need to do is separate all of these wires. And that way I can tie them in to that board. So I think I'm just going to cut these here. I have my sheet here and as you can see I got my program run and then I have my common I have a front lamp a rear lamp and feature but one only one common 
So the feature is going to be the front window. Front lamp will be the very front. The rear will obviously be the rear. And then all the commons are going to tie together. So what I should have done was left the whites connected and just extended it. But that's okay. I can just use one longer, in this case, this black wire, which will tap high to common. Okay, so I got the light bulbs back in place now. I have the wires tied. Also marked on my paper um, the colors of each wire here. And I'm going to lay the train this way. That way I can line them up with these marks and figure out what they actually are. So let me see if I can just slide this in the shot here. So we'll just lay the cab about where we want it so that I have enough play. And I think I'm just going to take a very small amount off of these wires so that they're all about the same size. And then I'm going to strip these and tend you, tend them, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm just going to put a little solder on each one of these wires to keep them together. So green is the feature of this very end. I've already opened these all the way up, so it makes it a little easier. So there's the green. Let's go ahead and do the back, excuse me, the black for the common. And then we have blue, which is the front. And then last is brown. So the only one of these screw terminators not getting used is this second one over, which is actually for the chuff end. So now I need to pull this board off here. And now I need to figure out a way of having a wire now I don't kind of thinking that I'm gonna have to do what I didn't want to do and solder to the underside of that board because I don't just I just don't see any other way of doing it okay so I went ahead and soldered that wire to that third pin uh, I then checked with my multimeter make sure I didn't short the other two pins out because remember it's on that connector if you look at it here you have the purple wire, which is serial. That's the pin we soldered to, and then you have ground and power. So you don't want those to short out. Remember, when you hit the horn button, this pin here goes high and sends out the pulse to your line arrow uh, soundboard. So you don't want that to happen. Anyhow, I then I got it all buttoned up. I didn't put any screws in it yet because I'm going to fix the soundboard, and I don't want to get ahead of myself and put all the screws in for me then have to take it back out so okay so here's my uh, test setup I have the just a small cheap transformer TMCC it's connected to the track that's the TMCC command base and then here is the engine on the track now I had to lift a shell up because I had some problems I couldn't get the lights to work and um, I realized what the issue was I have it set up as front and rear and originally the front light was burnt out so that's why it wasn't working. And I never ran the unit in, in reverse. So it was kind of confusing. It took me a little bit to get it figured out, but I do have it figured out. So what we'll do is we have, we'll turn power to the train. Uh, I have this set up as feature six with this diesel and cab marker light. So I have the front light here. So you have the front light and then the cab. Uh, if I hit the number eight, that'll turn that cab light off. Hit eight, I can turn it back on. So let's turn it off. And let's go ahead and run it forward. And you see it goes forward. We'll stop it and we'll do direction. And then if we look at the direction, when I go back,
there's no rear light, so you're not going to be able to see it, but there it is in reverse. We'll hit direction again. You can see the front light is off when I'm going in reverse. We'll hit the direction again, turn that front light on, and then I can start moving it forward. Okay, so we have there we have it. Um, I'm going to conclude the install of the electric railroad uh, cruise commander light right here. Um, when I get this horn board working, I'll get another video up of that going into back into the uh, engine here and back together. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Questions post down below. Please remember to hit that like button if this helped you out. Thanks very much.